biomedical image processing course today we will continue a topic based on computer aided early diagnosis of diabetic retinopathy here our objective is to make a system automated so that if we give a fundus image as a input it can able to identify all possible lesions of the diabetic retinopathy and make the image grading this type of work we are going to highlight in today's talk let us start with predictive value estimation and power accuracy can be quantified by how well the test result predict the true disease status please note that the test should be studied in wide variety of circumstances in which its ability to predict true clinical status may vary in continuation to that a prediction value quantify accuracy by how well the test predicts the status they are often presented together with sensitivity and specificity data for the test databases the predictive value of positive test positive predictive value is the probability that subject is diseased if the test is positive predictive value of the negative test gives information that negative predictive value is the probability that subject is non diseased when the test generated from the subject gives ne negative result a perfect test will predict disease perfectly with ppv equal to 1 and npv equal to 1 with this formula we can able to find out the predictive value the predictive value depends not only on the performance of the test in disease and non disease subject but also on the prevalence of the disease a low ppv may be result of low prevalence of a disease or an unreliable test or sometime both of them so this way we have to evaluate the performance of the test which we have performed predictive value quantify the clinical value of the test the patient and the doctor want to know how likely it is that disease is present given the test result a screening test need to be more accurate if it is to work well in a low prevalence situation such as a screening program which we carried out for the masses and in such cases we have to go with some pre plan conversely lower sensitivity may be acceptable in territory or where disease prevalence is very high and this situation we need to consider a tourism work thinking about is that it is much easier to ascertain large advanced lesion seen in a territory care setting that subtle initial lesions such as those seen in screening programs as every grader knows it is quite difficult for grader to agree whether minimum diabetic retinopathy is present in that subject or it is absent in an image from a screening program which we have been carried out to test all age group of the society interestingly the the group has presented good result from disease or no disease computer added diagnosis grading in scotland their papers are recommended for further reading to know details about which type of standard they have been follow to get the detailed information so that their test mechanism and screening process were successful there is recruitment effect known from psychological research 
Once the first microneurism is identified, more of them are suddenly perceived. A good computer-aided diagnosis algorithm could be more sensitive than humans for minimal diabetic retinopathy, but perhaps less sensitive for advanced diabetic retinopathy with atypical manifestations. Data such as TPF, FPF, PPV and NPV are thus context dependent on each other. All these parameters one has to consider for such a good effective screening. TPF, FPF, PPV and NPV are proportions. Estimation is preferred to hypothesis testing, confidence interval for proportions and for differentiation between proportions can be calculated. Exact method which according to some statistician may give conservative result are available for example in StatZ software. One can follow this particular link to have detailed exploration about this software which is more effective and very good for following a data collection and grading of the diabetic retinopathy subjects. I repeat that you are likely to find that many studies of diagnostic tests are underpowered, yielding imprecise estimates, wide confidence intervals and so on. This observation particularly applies when analyzing subgroups whose property may influence the outcome of the test means few of the data which are of very high result of towards either in positive side or negative side may sometime affect on other subjects which are included. Consequently, per study power calculation have been recommended for such a situation. For instance, when the number of patients with the target condition is 49, the two-sided 95% confidence interval of a sensitivity of 81% 42 positive is 68% to 91% percentage. One of the first question your statistician is likely to ask is whether you wanted to falsify a null hypothesis of equivalence between the index test and the reference test or if you want to falsify a null hypothesis of non-superiority. The latter could need a larger study population depending on design and analysis method. So, if suppose a small population of group we have been used to gather and test may not able to give a correct result up to some extent, then there is need to increase your population to have more accuracy. In machine learning also, if we increase the data set, then more accuracy we can get. So, same thing we can follow for such screening mechanism. Overcalling, reporting a higher than warranted diabetic retinopathy grade needlessly causes a alarm in people with diabetic and waste ophthalmology resources. Undercalling, reporting a lower than warranted diabetic retinopathy grade can have serious consequences for the person which are suffering with diabetic especially when STDR is missed and laser treatment is ineffective because of delay. So, if through screening, early detection is not properly performed and cannot able to diagnose and treatment is given like to recover from the laser, it may have very late approach because from that stage onwards, 
subject might be suffering with blindness. Sladery undertook a computer simulation of a ways of sampling referral decisions during grading and criteria for initiating intensive quality assurance investigation mechanism they have been followed and assessing the effectiveness of QA systems by the ability to detect a grader or computer aided diagnosis program making occasional errors. He found that substantial sample sizes are needed to ensure against inappropriate failure to refer false negatives reason. So such situation also we must have to consider while trying to get highest accuracy. And a certain plausible assumption detection of a grader who fails to refer as many as 10% of cases with referral STDR can only be achieved with a probability of 0.58 using an annual sample size of 300 and 0.77 with 500 size of large subjects. So this way as we increase the population the accuracy will increase. The same sample size would only have a probability 0.33 and 0.55 respectively of detecting a grader or a program missing 5% of reference while doing data collection and grading. Calculating statistical power, a job for your statistician becomes more complicated when multiple tests are performed on one subject. So, if we have to plan a multiple more than one test on the one subject, it may give somewhat variation in the result. In medical practice, the result of several different tests or algorithms are combined to reach a threshold value or decision rule also. The diagnostic accuracy of combination of tests can be assessed by applying multivariable regression analysis with receiving operating characteristics curve. Using such advanced technique, we can able to check the performance of mechanism which we have followed from data collection up to grading. If there are variation, we can have updation or modification and repeat the process. This will iterate till we will not get higher desired accuracy. The receiver operating characteristics curve is useful way of describing the performance of medical test whose result are not simply positive or negative but are measured on continuous or ordinance scales. Means in those cases we may change the number of population, their location, time and duration etc. Suitable use of ROC curve helps designer of a test choose the optimal combination of sensitivity and specificity. ROC curve now in frequent used by developers of CAD software where first used half a century ago. So it has begins early from a last few years. They arose in the context of signal detection theory and were first applied to radar operators coming into use in medicine from 1960 onwards particularly in radiology concept to get the image, process them and have a diagnosis easier. Assume that larger values of the test result Y are more indicative of diseases. The notion of using Y to define a decision rule is fundamental to the evaluation of all such medical tests which we perform 
on a complete set of population. The surgeon needs a yes or no answer on the questions whether to operate at once. The decision rule is based on whether or not the test result or some transformation of it exceeds a threshold value. So by varying that threshold, we can again further subclassify that data and get accurate decision for the surgeon to go for surgery or to have other plan of treatment. The choice of suitable threshold will vary with circumstances and it also depends on the trade-off that is acceptable between failing to detect disease and falsely identifying disease with the test. The ROC curve describes the range of trade-offs that can be achieved by the test. For continuous test, example, microneurism counts which are currently present on that fundus image, blood vessel diameter measurements using a threshold C. Define a binary test from the continuous test result Y as positive if Y is greater than or equal to C, negative if your value of Y is less than C. This way we compare and take a proper decision to have further good plan. Let the corresponding true and false positive fraction at the threshold C be TPF of C and FPF of C respectively. This way we do for verification of performance of the set of steps which we have carried out. The ROC curve is the entire set of possible true and false positive fraction attainable by the method where Y with different varying threshold values. An uniformity test is one such that Y is unrelated to disease status. That is, the probability distribution of Y are the same in the disease and the non-disease population. And for any threshold C, we have TPF of C is equal to FE of C and the ROC curve becomes a line with having unit slope. This way, a desired output is required from the ROC to get a good performance of the test. A perfect test, on the other hand, completely separate disease and non-disease subjects. That is, for some threshold C, we have TPF of C equal to 1 and FP of C equal to 0. In other words, 100% sensitivity and 100% specificity. Its ROC curve is along the left and upper border of positive unit quadrant. Such dynamic and the uniform standard ROC curve if we get, we have very good test and which can be generalized for the testing, verification, grading, etc. Most tests have ROC curve that lies between those of the perfect and useless test. Better tests have ROC curve closer to upper left corner. The ROC curve depicts the entire set of operating characteristics, FPF, TPF, possible with the test performance measurement. Reporting of the FPF as well as TPF attained at only a single threshold which conveys little useful information. This all too often occurs. That makes it difficult to compare different studies of the same test. Particularly when different thresholds we have used to employ for the performance measurement. By reporting the entire ROC curve, information about a test can be compared and possibly combined across studies. 
the two diagnostic methods are applied to the same subject. Their ROC curve will be different if we compare themselves. By using such methods, we can have a comparison within the group and intra-group and so on. Confident bands can be calculated and shown. There are several methods for comparing ROC curve for different test mechanisms. Overall now, we summarize that we have been come across with a topic like predictive value, estimation, power, receiver operating, characteristic curve and next in successive slide, our objective is to see detail some other good advanced techniques which are useful to diagnose various lesions. Thank you. Thank you very much.